was at the parade. All right, I turned it up. Um, yeah, I yeah, a little kid's gonna. Yeah, I can understand that. They like the park. Yeah. And that would be easier than the parade. Did you miss the parade? Me? No, yeah. not at all. Yeah, it's hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, guys. How you doing? Mr. Facebook. <laughs> I don't have anything better to do these days, man. I just I get more shares from you on Facebook yeah. than any, any one of my friends. I hope, I hope there's something you like. I like... I'm really into cars and always have been all my life and cartoons and jokes. And I try to stay away from the political bullshit, but every now and then I, I got a comment on it, but I try to stay away from that for the most part. So I, I hope you enjoy some of those shares. Well, I, I do, but if you put political stuff on, I'd probably say hi. To That's what I've done to a lot of people. I don't, I don't, I, I don't initiate anything, but I get a lot of, I, I comment on a lot of people's, what I what I think to be insanity, which just means I don't agree with them. So mm -hmm. they don't agree with me. So what the hell? It's just kind of fun sometimes. Yeah. But I like I like looking at cars and music stuff. Yeah, you know yeah. when you put music stuff in bands, uh, I'll look at that. If it's yeah. any, if it's anybody, if anybody puts anything political out out, and there's too many times, I'll just hide them. I just I just get a kick out of the out of some of the things people see and the attitudes of people, and especially with a lot of things going on with with the discrimination against so many different groups of people anymore. I don't understand where that comes from. But to me, it's like, live your life, let people live their lives, yeah. and never the twain shall meet, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I don't even like putting bumper stickers on my car, much less putting my opinion about something out on the internet. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you, nobody has ever convinced anybody. All they do is argue about stuff on the internet. So I try to stay yeah. above it. I mean, I, I know what I what I believe, and and like I said, um, and if anybody posts a lot of bull, bullshit, like Barry said, I just uh, just delete it, you know, or uh, hide it. I hide them, that yeah. person, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know because I have some friends that I like, and they and they don't post it all the time. I'll I'll hide certain remarks. Or if they're sharing it from a certain source that I think it, I don't care for, I'll I'm sorry about it. If it's constant, constant, that's when I hide them, and I've done that maybe five, ten times in the last since Facebook came out. Yeah. Let's see what I got here. You know, I've I've had a, a, a few friends over the years that we don't see eye to eye politically that have uh, have uh, what you call it uh, unfriended me. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's a shame. When I say hi. That's what I mean. Unfriend. I've done that. Yeah. I, I I don't mind if somebody doesn't agree with me. I'm not going to unfriend them. Like, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, and I'll, I respect that. As long as they respect me back for my opinion, I, I have no problem with with staying. You know, I got a different viewpoint. My viewpoint is Facebook's not the place for that. So I don't yeah. want. Yeah, that's I all right. Enough I political bullshit. It. Enough political bullshit for a lovely Friday afternoon in Colorado. Just in case you uh, had a hanker to see what Bourbon Street looked like on Mardi Gras Day. <laughs> I, I, I'm i glad you put that up. I, I was just thinking on Tuesday, mm -hmm. it's 50 years since I first came to New Orleans for the yeah. first time uh, and worked at the Mustache on, on Bourbon Street at Mardi Gras for six days. And uh, I think I slept about 10 or 12 hours in that six days and was just drunk or stoned the whole rest of the time and sweating like a pig, man. Yeah. But anybody who thinks you have a, uh, you can go wherever you want to when you get on Bourbon Street, you pretty much is, you're like caught in a river. You yeah, know, it's like you kind of end up going wherever um, the the crowd is going. But yeah, this is pretty typical of what the street looks like. This was a good shot. It, it was the best weather we had for Mardi Gras in a long, long time. You know? That's a great shot, man. So, yeah. Mike, 1973 was your first year. Yep. Yeah. 73, 75, and then in 79, the year the, the cops were on strike, was canceled. I think all four of us were there in 73. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah I was I there. So. Yeah. Gentry and Pete Vrianitis and a whole bunch of other people. I believe here it is 50 years later, the four of us are still. How about that? Look at that picture yeah. like this. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Holy yeah. What, is, what are the cars on Bourbon Street for? How come they're there? I don't know. They might have delivered something or had some. I, I don't even know. I didn't shoot this picture. Somebody had uh, full, put it up, and I saw. I said, "That's a great shot." 
Um, I can't even tell what hundred block it is. It might be. It might be. Um, hmm. Well, I hope they don't try to get their car out because. <laughs> no, yeah, you know, they usually have it blocked off, but um, so I don't know how they got in there. But See, anyways, I, I, I don't think that's Bourbon Street. Maybe it's not. Let's see. I think that's the crew of St. Anne marching down Royal Street. Yeah. Because there's other cars further yeah, that down. Does, well, that, that looks uh, like more like Royal Street, those balconies. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, so I saw that Bourbon shot. Street, they, they opened, the mayor walked down with the police commissioner at 12 o'clock and opened up Bourbon Street. Didn't yeah. they used to do that at 10 o'clock? No, midnight. It's always it's midnight. It's always been midnight. Okay. Horse, yeah, the, night, night. the police oh. come horseback and they get everybody off the street, you know. Hey, Mike. Mike, Mike. thanks for y'all singing that song on Mardi Gras Day to me. I appreciate that. Uh, where were you? Well, I, I didn't go down. I, I was right here in my garage. That's what I figured. That's what I figured. I, I remember one time I talked talk to Barry, you know, we spent maybe more than just a few Mardi Gras together in a quarter. I said, what are you going to do tonight? He said, I'm going to watch I'm gonna watch Mardi Gras on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, guess what? Do you know that all five of, of us on right now were at Mardi Gras 50 years ago, 1973? Yeah, yes, sir. Yep. That was my first year there, Mike, 50 years ago. Yeah, it was an, it was an interesting one. It was my first year as band leader in, in New Orleans. and had to coordinate a bunch of stuff. Uh, but uh, it worked out okay. It was a good time, good time. It was. It was great. Well, being the band leader, what Mike's talking about, it's fun. The coordination is mixing the bands, the different bands from different cities together. And who's going to play with whom, when, and what would be a good band. And all I remember that, Mike. Mm -hmm. and we do one shift where you had your, you were with your guys, like the Denver band played with all Denver guys. Yep. But then the rest of the shifts was mix and match. But it always ended up with seven or eight people on the stage anyway. Right, because you, you'd play one shift and then you'd, you'd sit in one shift. Sit in, yeah. That's yeah, I showed, I showed this picture last last week, but this was probably 1973. That was 73. Yeah. Yeah. My, yeah. Mike, look how fat you were. Jesus. Handsome, good looking. Me, I'm Bruce looking at his fingers. And uh, let's see. What do we got here? We got who's playing tuba? I can't tell. I think it's Bill Clark. But that's Ron Jancic playing trombone, Maynard, yeah. LeBeau, and uh, Yo. Yoke. Billy Mike, Blank. you look like you're a banjo player in the Grateful Dead or something in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the day after I met Yoke. I met Yoke the Friday. That's the Saturday night. Yeah. yeah. That's the day after I met Yoke. Mm -hmm. And Bruce O'Neill's looking at his fingers. Yeah, that said that. He hadn't figured that one out yet. He hadn't figured out the D minor seventh chord out yet. <laughs> and Billy Blank, he he, he hadn't learned how to put, turn his hat upside down yet. No, no, I, I was I had two. I have a picture in each hand there, man. Just a second, I can't I can't uh, give people their change while I got my pat two hands, two pictures in my hands. Yeah. Anyway. Supposed to carry four pitchers in one hand and do the hats and the change in the other. I could. Well, I could actually carry three pitchers in one hand and ten mugs in the other. There you go. Yeah. That was 73 or 74. Wow. Is that the about off the balcony of the mustache? Yep. Or probably earlier in the day. I love the way the the guys and you know people have suits on and yeah, yeah. isn't that crazy? A different time. Yeah, it must be early because there's not a lot of people there. Yeah. And could you send me a, a copy of that picture, please? Sure. Just email it to me I, if you would. I'd appreciate it. I know the mustache band from Denver was staying at. I think it's the Ramada, up uh, down. Bourbon Street, about two blocks on the left-hand side, on the corner. Yeah, 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 they had a Mr. Perky's on the ground floor. Or, or yeah, yeah. Joint. Yeah, Ramada. Yeah, I know it took 45 minutes to walk 
from the mustache <laughs> to the hotel. Yeah. Two well, look, one time uh, when Vince Vance had, had just started out, they did a special show early on, on, on in that Mardi Gras thing. And we had to strike their gear and carry it a block to, to the corner of St. Louis to get in the truck so they could do another gig. And that was a job just trying to carry it like amplifiers and all that stuff through that crowd. You know, it was, there wasn't no room to roll it. You had to like pick it up and go, you know. Well, I think, well, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but one of the most amazing things at Mardi Gras was the Saturday night at the Mustache where we ran out of beer. Right. Yeah. And, and Joel was there and he got on the horn with, uh, or Roger was there, got on the horn with Schlitz. And uh, they, because we, we'd gone through like 12 or 14 barrels of beer already that night. And, uh, but Schlitz delivered, man. I was amazed. Amazing. Anyway. Yeah, this is a picture. Um, I found a bunch of stuff in my attic I'm going to share today, uh, or parts of it anyway. This is from a, your mu a mustache nose uh, picture. It was on the front, how we did that little magazine. So I don't know. Um, this is a That's our balcony up there with people looking down, and that's Bourbon Street. So this would have been... Um, early 70s because uh, I started in 71 and I and I, I have about three issues of the mustache nose and uh, this was a picture on the front page of one of them who are anybody recognize any of those people up there looks like Ed Alley the guy all the way to the right um kind of looks it? like Ira pulling his shirt up it looks like <laughs> Ira Gutman to me yeah yeah that might be Ira doing that. We always had a, yeah, I think all the way far right is a waiter that was used to work there, Tommy Barrios. And, uh, and if you look right in the center of the picture on the, or the, the, the left hand picture, the crowd picture in the street. Yeah. The mansard balconies, oh, that's that hotel I think you were talking about. We're yeah. Yeah, that's, yes. a, that's the Ramada that's right it. there. Yeah. <laughs> they, had a, yeah, they had a place sure. called Mr. Perky's in the bottom. It was, and they stayed open all night long. Many times after work, we'd go get a breakfast there. I remember it. Barry and I used to go to Molly's for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Molly's Irish Pub. Yeah, yeah that get, was a good place. Get some red beans. And... Yeah. yeah uh, Big Bill worked there after the mustache burned down. Yeah. Uh, Molly. Yeah, get a bowl of red beans at two in the morning. It was great. It was perfect. Yeah. Now, now this is one where um, some people were moving their beds from the from the mustache to wherever they were staying. Yeah, I've seen that before. I don't know the whole story behind that. We used to bring some mattresses upstairs. I don't remember having whole beds up there though. Well, that's the explanation I got when I put it up before. Yeah, I don't, I don't recognize the fellers. But that's quite a ways. That that's in front of Fritzel's. That's way down. It's Bourbon and Orleans. You know. Yeah. Maybe they were bringing the uh, bed to the mustache to bring it upstairs. I don't know, but I don't recognize anybody either. It looks like they got their luggage and the bed together. <laughs> I remember one time I stayed with Bruce Wilson. Remember Bruce Wilson? Yes. Yeah. He only charged me 50 bucks to stay in his house. He charged you? Yeah. That was Bruce. He charged me 50 bucks to stay in his friggin' house. Oh, well. <laughs> That's okay. I had two girls with me. Oh, okay. Okay. Just a cleanup fee, I guess, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Years ago, years. I haven't been to Mardi Gras. Probably that one time you I came in there. One, what's that? You with me? You with me about five, six years ago? Four yeah, but we didn't. Ago. Me, you, Dottie, and hey, one of my granddaughters, Haley, went down. But we did. We went down during the day, didn't we? Yeah. We didn't go at night. No, not at night. I remember. I remember that we were right down on Bourbon Street. We went in the little bar and doing karaoke music. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Anyway. So, Michael, it looked like you had a nice sunset there behind you. Yeah, that's that's from several years ago. And when I was living in Parker, it was beautiful sunsets out there from time to time. And it's probably seven or eight years ago, uh, looking out the front window of my townhouse in Parker, Colorado. You still there? No, I sold it four years ago. I, I had to get out of there. I couldn't do the stairs anymore, Mike, between COPD and bad news, bad knees and stuff. So I sold it and got out of there. I'm living in Aurora at my sister's house and just uh, kind of hanging out, not doing much of anything these days. It's difficult. Like the old song says, I don't get around much anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you you on oxygen 100% now? Oh, yeah. I've been for 24 hours a day, probably for five years. And I can't go anywhere without it. And even at that, it's you gotta go down uh, CPD. Go down to sea level, man. You need to go down to now, I, I've been at sea level. Like when we were in Florida, Clearwater and Punta Gordon and stuff, things were not as bad as they are now, but I, I still struggled there. And same thing in California and Monterey and Sacramento for over the years. So and was, I've got great doctors here and 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 a good support system. So, it, you know, it doesn't make sense for me to leave. All right. I mean, I'm not trying to. I'm just I'm not, my mom had uh, emphysema. They would move yeah. from Denver down, down to Phoenix, which is down 4000 feet. Yeah. It helped her a lot. Well, I have COPD. It's a combination of COPD uh, encompasses bronchitis and emphysema and several other things. So it's yeah, all tied I, I, together. Yeah, my 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 pulmonologist says I got fifty percent of what I'm supposed to have. Well, I got about twenty percent right now. Yeah. That much. Anyway, who's playing washboard there? That's uh, Steve Pistorius, who's a piano player playing yeah, washboard. Charlie Fardella playing trumpet who was with Bond News Band for a long time, and I worked with him a whole lot. Yeah. Elkham on trombone, Danny on tuba. And if you look to the far left, the guy in the suit, he's holding a banjo. That's Terry Bennett, who we knew from the Red Guard. Or he's Red Guard or up in Wildwood, wow. Hmm. Yeah, the story is a good player. Yeah, I, it might have been me that took that picture because I was certainly there with him. Were you the sausage or something? Yeah, uh huh. And, and you know where that picture was taken? Right in front of the old Red Garter, which it became Crazy Shirley. Crazy. Now it's called Crazy Corner. It's uh, Bourbon and St. Peter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the building right on the Cata Corner. That's the that was the main entrance to the Red Garden, the, the, right at the cat corner of the building. Bob Adams worked there too. You know that? Yeah, he was there when I was there. Yeah. As a waiter. I remember when it was crazy Shirley's. I saw uh, some ex mustache uh, band members playing in there. Um, Paul Crawford. Um, right. I remember popping in one night. I saw him playing in there. Um, he and didn't. Freddie Alonzo went there afterward. Yeah. Okay. Paul Crawford, he's a trombone player, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say, Roger? Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi, Roger. Hey, Roger. How y'all doing there? Okay. Roger, we don't, we don't use the G word around here, man. We don't use gentlemen, what word? Gentlemen, no gentlemen here. Oh, oh I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> It says I'm available. Okay, yeah. that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah. I had, I remember the Friday afternoon club we used to use as a warm-up for Friday night. That was oh, a warm-up, all right. Warm-up yeah. how to clean up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Remember the charity hospital nurses would come in for a buck and drink for three hours. <laughs> well, yeah, but you guys had lassos on them, too, so they couldn't get out. <laughs> the the Denver lasso. guys paid three bucks. Girls got in free on Friday afternoon club. Yeah. Oh, y'all had oh the girls got in free for three hours. Wow. Yep. I thought that oh we, we charged a dollar. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guy, how much were the guys? The guys were like five bucks, something like that. Uh, three bucks. Three dollars. Three bucks. Three dollars. Yeah. yeah. Three bucks. You can't yeah, buy a beer today for three you bucks. Drink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, There's, but in Denver, in Denver, that was not, not just beer. That was like hard drinks too. 
Oh, it that's like right, that yeah. New Orleans. Was it? Know. Yeah. I thought it was just beer. Well, since Roger joined us. But that's a, I, that was a postcard I made. Uh, well, I had a shot and I made a postcard out of it. And we're having a record contest. So I sent that out to all of the clubs, challenging everybody to try to beat our record sales. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Top, sa top sales people right here. <laughs> I remember in New Orleans for the Roger, you see if you remember this for FAC Club. Right. The, the the big craze, the, the new craze was sangria. So we opened oh. up sangria and put it in the pitchers with a piece of orange and a cherry. Look, it was even worse. People got sicker. Really? <laughs> that's, 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 I remember that. I remember the but, same. But it was more colorful. It didn't we use Bo Boone's Farm or something? <laughs> I, I think we put some... I think we put sangria wine in, but didn't we like put a little rum and uh, seven up in it or something? Oh but, man, yeah. I remember that? And it started up with a start people up with were a puking sauce. all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when someone comes. We have a problem in the bathroom. Oh my god, I don't want to go in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sangria. Hey, I'm ready for spring, y'all. Spring, I am too. It's been it's cool spring. down here. We skip it's, right it's, the it's, summer. It's, it's in the eighties down here. It's eighty something degrees outside right now. Oh, it's it's thirty nine outside right here. Yeah, yeah, it's about thirty here. Hey, Mike, you you recognize that scene behind me now? Yeah. See Mary's Glacier. Yep. A whole lot of years ago. Oh. Well, that's your it's house. Probably, what? That's your house in there, right? Yeah, your, it's probably right. fifteen years yeah. ago, twenty years ago. That's a good hike from St. Mary's Glacier, though. Yeah, I, I was only up there two or three times over the years. But uh, I used to like to just go up there with some good beer and some good food and some good books and sit on my big tush and not do anything. Hiking was a little bit beyond my real desires, if you will. Yeah. Right. But it's sure nice up there in the summertime. Yeah. Vince Vance. Vince Vance. I was going through my attic. I found uh, this is a really big, it's a, newspaper size poster I found in the attic. I just uh, I couldn't scan it. I had to just shoot it with my, my phone because <laughs> it was uh, that's the original Vince Vance. Yeah, that's the original group. Yeah. And there's yeah. the Andy Stone's far right. Um that's right, yeah. And, and uh, yeah. Wilbur Kite, the washboard player. Yeah. In the middle was Vince Vance. But well, he just started off I remember he I just started off playing a couple of 50 songs. He'd go out, leave the washboard and grease his hair back and come out. And we did in the band would do a mm -hmm. 50s medley, the actual mustache band. And uh the audience loved it. And then um mm -hmm. it kind of progressed from there. Yeah. The, guy I, next, the guy next to Vince is Sid Arroyo. Oh. Which yeah. one's Vince? STP. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Joe Mullane's got the hairy belly. Right yeah. next to him. Oh, is that Joe Mullane? Yeah. And next to him, I think we used to call that guy Skeeter or something, the uh, one with the sunglasses. The one with the hat looks like Wes Mix. It might That's Wes Mix, yeah. It might have been, yeah. A lot yeah, of, a lot of West Mix. Yeah. And I guess behind Wes Mix, is that Andy? Andy Stone? Yeah, behind him. Right. Yeah. Behind Wes Mix is Andy Stone. He was Andy Stone at the time. Now he's yeah, he had a different, different, different names. <laughs> yeah. But now the original Vince Vance Wilbur, he's a Loyola law professor or something. Yeah, yeah. he is. I was when I was visiting New Orleans. We were uptown at uh, Pascal Manelli's. We're mm -hmm. sitting there eating shrimp. I was talking to my wife, and uh, I heard these guys next to him talking about something about Bourbon Street. And I went, had lunch, and you guys work on Bourbon Street. We turned around as Wilbur. This guy <laughs> we looked at each other and started laughing. <laughs> yeah, he's a uh, teaches law, I think, at uh, Loyola. Right. Yeah. yeah. That was a funny way to run into him. Yeah. That's it. There we go. Hmm. Yeah. They caught that 50s thing early. I mean, they had Sha Na Na and then them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That was pretty much not long after Woodstock, you know, and that the Shana and I was doing it, and uh, you know, I guess it's before Happy Days came on TV. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And Greece brought a lot of that back. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. But we had fun. I remember we'd let the waiters uh, dress up. Um, I remember I had bought a black band lawn shirt, and I'd slick my hair back when the, they would play. Uh, I think sometimes they would let them play on Friday night for a while, Vince Vance, uh -huh. at the club when it was uh, before, yeah. and the band would come on later. Roger, when was that? I was there from they, they play. I was there 72, 73, and 74, and that band was not there. Yeah, it was no, there. It was, it, that. it was in the late 60s, I thought. Yeah. No, it started when I was there, and I started in 71. Right. Yeah. That's right. And they played for a Friday afternoon club, like every Friday. Mm -hmm. But they didn't use our bandstand. They set up on the floor. Mm -hmm. the, the club would be set up in full room. And that back table to the right, they pull it out, and that's where they'd set up. Yeah. Yeah. But it was interesting. We had fun. It kind of took what, on a life. What was, what, was, what was capacity of the club at full room? A full room? 500? No, no. no I think no, maybe no. four tops. Say four I would say top three something, because, you know, then we would cram four, 400 people in there to have a long line at the bar about two or three deep. All the way to right. the front door. <laughs> right. Yeah. The funniest thing when we'd change the room and people would be in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'd move it back and move walls. People, waiters be moving the walls and all of a sudden they'd roll the bandstand around. <laughs> yeah. People didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> was that, was a, a great, that was a great idea. The club looked full all the time. Yeah, that, yeah. that was the purpose of it. Yeah. Because nobody wanted to walk into a, a room that was empty or half right. full. This is everybody they're having a good time. Well, let's go in here, you know. Yeah, because at, half, at, yeah. at what three quarter no half room, we'd be what ninety five people be full. Someone got ninety hundred. Oh yeah, half it was about a hundred. I bet easy. Yeah. Yeah. The, the 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 walls were originally made out of wood, and they were very heavy to move around. Then they come in and remodeled it and. Uh, with those nice lighter aluminum walls up. That's the walls right there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh. And they had tracks in the seal and, and the floor. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> that was funny. Not the best picture, but it's it shows the walls. It shows Barry Maynard, Pete, and Mike. Right. When I worked that there, that's the band I saw most of the time. That, 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 know, that must have been that was meant like 73, 74 had to be. And and you know you know, Pete was on what two weeks ago, guys? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I called him up to come on. I said, We hadn't seen you in a long time, but when I saw his picture, he's losing weight. He he looks sick. Oh uh, yeah. Oh man. I remember I remember him coming on. Nasty Pete. The girls hated him. They called him Nasty Pete. He'd get up there on stage. He'd get a girl up to do rubber ducky or something like that. First thing Pete would do is go over there and try and undo their bra strap. <laughs> Remember that? Isn't that right, Barry? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> said, Pete, you can't do that. No. Nope. In his territory, he thought he had the room, I guess, to do it. <laughs> Pete, Pete had an interesting personality. He wanted to work in at Disney. Uh -huh. I call it a, a touchy-feely personality. Anytime he talked to you, he had to have his hands going, touching you somehow. And like these little 18-year-old girls, they'd freak, man. He got <laughs> turned in so many times at Disney. For hey, be careful what you say this recorded. Well, things get lost sometimes, you know. <laughs> that was a good band right there. Maynard was great. That's a great band. Yeah. I love that band. That was a good one. Yeah. We had a lot of fun with that band. Yeah. Yes, we did. And, you know, we were, because we were doing, what, what, five nights a week, that band, those four guys, that we got real tight. You remember that, man? Yeah. We got real tight. Yeah, you were dumb. Yeah. And what did Maynard yeah. used to say? Let's let, let's get a taste. Yeah. Let's get a taste. Yeah. <laughs> me and me and Maynard go over go, go over to people's and get a, a jug. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Shit. 
you know, right. sometime in 73 because we weren't wearing suspenders yet. Right. Yeah, that's that 73. Yeah. You know, the story <laughs> goes that, okay, the band, we take our break and they would sell us a highball for 35 cents. Mm. A good, strong highball for 35 cents. That was the band, uh, the employee prices. We were drinking so much, we figured that was too expensive. Thirty-five cents. <laughs> so then we went. So we went to Fred and said, "Look, can we buy? Can we buy the booze by the bottle? You know, give us a good price on a bottle of booze." He said, "Okay." We did that for about two or three weeks. We figured that was too high. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> that was too high. And then Maynard knew Mister Johnny at People's. We go to People's Grocery and get the real rat gut stuff or a couple oh, of a bottle. Yeah. That was our price range for what we were drinking. <laughs> yeah, it was like three fifty a quarter, something like that, Barry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, rock got shit, man. Oh, <laughs> yeah. When you remember when you mentioned people's, I remember having to run over there occasionally because we were out of limes, or you know, for the drinks. Oh yeah, yeah that people's was, was a staple for a lot of things. Yeah, uh, I, I remember. I remember saying to Maynard, I said, Maynard, this booze tastes t terrible. This is freaking awful. He said, Barry, he said, if I was drinking for taste, I go get me a tutti fruity malt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not drinking for taste. <laughs> drinking uh, for effect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. Barry, have you showed those pictures that we did in your garage oh, two years ago? When Maynard, Maynard came over and Yoke was there. Think, I don't think I had to get him over there to him. That was great. I was in town. You know, and, can, can you put that picture back up on? That one last one, Billy? No, Bob, uh, Tom did that one. Tom? Okay, it's yeah. coming. Give me a second. I, I want to make a comment. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I want to make a comment about that picture. Uh. Now, even though it's blurred, you got to admit, our pants were white. Our shirts looked halfway pressed. We all had ties. We looked pretty presentable there, right? Huh? Yeah. 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 I mean, that was definitely out of the norm. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been the first set. Yeah. <laughs> that was definitely out of the norm, but we looked damn good there. Jeez, yeah. what happened? <laughs> first set and the first of the week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. It wasn't two in the morning on a Saturday. Yeah, it was a mistake when we went to suspenders and any kind of shirt you wanted. That was a mistake. This looked better. Yeah, oh yeah. I think so. Eventually we went back to this. The waiters didn't go, they stayed in best, didn't they? They go yeah, to we got to wear suspenders and uh casual also um same thing, yeah. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. I think the waiters were in white vests, weren't they? No, no exactly. blue vests. Or blue vests. Blue vests. And uh, the doormen were red vests and the floormen. Yeah, I agree with Bear. I think I like the vest look better. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, absolutely. Looked like he belonged in that era. Even though now, if you hang around the banjo rallies to today, uh -huh. like Mike and I have, the red and white vests are the stigma. Uh. In other words, you know, they laugh at that. You know, but I let them laugh. Hell, we had a good time with those red and white vests. You bet. <laughs> you bet. We mean a stigma, Barry. We mean. Okay, now this is when. People make fun of it. Oh, okay. Now that that's us when we switch to casual shirts and vests. It looks like crap. No, that looks where, like a, where that looks is like a show band thing, huh? That's a that's an outside job somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like an outside job, but that's Mike and me for sure. Yeah, yeah. it's got hey, but I got that's Steve in the background. It looks like Yoke Steve. In the back. Yeah. yeah. Looks like Yoakum back there. Yeah. You sure that's not Captain Tony's? No, that's not Captain Tony's. It looks like we're on like a bandstand or a stage at like a convention center because the back curtain 
Looks yeah. like one of those blue curtains that you hang on over a bar on a stage or a band. Yeah. And I, I think, Mike, I think you had the beard the whole time I was there anyway. So and this might have been after. Well, I, I had to shave when I went to Disney. Right. But um, so this must have been after the mustache burnt, I think. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think Mike came down to one of his many trips to New Orleans and we had a gig and he was on it. Huh. Hey, Ira. Hey, hey guys. It's Thanks for having me back. Hi, Ira. Hey, guys. How is everybody? We are good. Great. Great. Good, Ira. Things in sunny Florida. Good. No tornadoes anywhere or snowstorms. Yeah. <laughs> Ira, you got a haircut. Tomorrow. Oh, I look like you have one right now. You combed your hair. You look like Al Pacino. I can't, I can't wait to get it tomorrow. You look like the Yiddish Al Pacino. <laughs> As opposed to Danny? What's he, the Guatemala, the Steven Seagal? I don't know. I saw that picture, body girl picture of Danny. I'm still trying to figure, figure that one out. That's funny, that picture. <laughs> that was funny. That's a was that the one in his underwear? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That's... Mardi Gras in full swing now, huh? That's over. Well, with. over. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is the band that was playing when I first started. Really? Oh, the mustache, yeah. Scotty, Scotty Hill on the horn. Yeah. Scotty? Dandy, Dandy, Dandy Stone, Stone on the two. Wilbur, who became Vince Vance, and Les, and... Oh. Uh, Herb. Herb. Herb Ison. No, yeah. that's Andy Stone. No, you think? No, yeah, think yeah, Andy Stone. That is that, is that Andy? Andy? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Herb had those little round glasses. And Herb played a tuba. He, he, uh, Andy played a sousaphone. Uh-huh. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right, brother. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> now, I was trying to find something else here. Let's see. Well, here's oh. one of the um, the band with the that Barry was talking about with the different shirts. Now I tell you who this is is starting from all the way to the right. It's Danny Rubio playing the tuba. Yeah, okay. and you. I'm on lead. Uh, Maynard but playing trombone. Next to Maynard is Danny's cousin Dave Weibel. Slide rule. He came yeah, to Dave Weibel on banjo. Yeah, Dave Weibel. Yeah, he played uh, Summer of 74 and two Mardi Gras. He was and then who's next to Dave Weibel on the left end? The, the left end with the hat is Tim Shea. Tim Shea. That's Tim Timmy Shea? Shea? His honor, Tim Whoa. Shea. Judge Shea. Yep. Wow. That looks he's right. A, right. He's right a judge. Yep. Yeah. That's a good shot there. Yeah, it is. Huh. But but I didn't like those costumes we were wearing. The you know no washboard player, player, huh? No washboard player in that picture. Hmm. Two, two banjos. Three banjos. Three banjos. Three banjos. But I think that night David was just sitting in. Yeah. But but he played, like I said, the whole summer of '74, and then two Mardi two Mardi Gras before and after. Hmm. Yeah, he was at the reunion in New Haven. Well, yeah, he, yep. in, uh, he's been to a bunch of them. Carnegie. Uh, he was right. at. Uh, he was at Puerto Gorda and Clearwater. Not yeah, in Puerto Gorda, in, Clearwater. I think he was in yeah. Oklahoma City, wasn't he? I think so, and he also showed up a few weeks ago in Connecticut. Yep. Hmm. And he's a wow. good banjo player. He's a real good banjo player. <laughs> that cigar's making me cough, Barry. Yeah. <laughs> this is um, this picture is from the mustache nose issue number oh, six. Oh yeah. Yeah, and this was uh the New York club. 
Look at that's, Byron the post, gun. that's the poster that was hanging up in the room on uh, behind Joel yeah, yeah. Carnegie. Right. Yeah. I see our good gut. I see our adductor. There's Marty Fay. Yeah. yeah, Marty Fay. Then Dave. Yeah, who was that behind Marty Fay? Dave Hunt, maybe. I don't know. No, what? I mean, not. I don't know who that is behind Marty Fay. Oh. <laughs> who's doing yeah. the banjo? Who's doing the banjo butt shot? I don't know. Mike Swan, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, no, I, have, I scanned a bunch of stuff in my attic. That's why I have these pictures that I had that the mustache. They're no great. They're great. Yeah. 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 Wow. Hey, Bill, I think I've got a one copy of the mustache nose somewhere. If I can find it, do you want it? Yeah, you could send it to me. I, I, I can scan it. And, oh, no, uh, you, can, you can keep it. I don't, I don't. I'm getting rid of stuff, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why. Last six years, I've been getting rid of all kinds of crap and giving it to friends and people that I, I got that copy that that, that picture's from of the complete yeah. mustache nose. Yeah, here's a great article about New York in there. In a yeah, of things. yeah. But let's see, Barry Maynard. I don't know who's next to him or next the next Barry to him. Right, I don't know. Bruce and Charlie Hernandez. Bruce and Neil Charlie. Charlie. Charlie Hernandez. Now Charlie is a guy that fell off the face of the earth. Once the mustache burned, I looked for him. I tried to get him for all the reunions. And, I, and they say he's still in town, but he has no phone or nothing. And he became the band director at a big local high school. And I never went to the high school, but I could never get in touch with him. I never talked with him after the mustache burned down. Hmm. Yeah. He became a big time band director, you know, high school band director. Did real well. And look how young Maynard looks. Yeah. Yeah. Weren't we all? <laughs> and yeah. Bruce Harry with hair and a mustache and a beard. My goodness. Yeah. And Bruce O'Neill with the Prince Valiant haircut. Yeah. He married a, a really good looking gal at the mustache. What was her name, Roger Lauren? Yeah, but it was Lauren, yeah. I think Lauren, it was. She, she's a really good looking gal, but it didn't last long, I guess. No, she had wondering eyes. <laughs> oh, speaking of hey, yeah. Speaking of the moving walls, you see the latches right behind the band. You can see the latches that we used yeah. to right. from flopping that was, back. Yeah. That's yeah. the new newer wall. Right, the metal ones. Right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Even yeah. the metal ones were, were heavy. It was a lot to move them. Yeah, and plus we had to move all the tables, reconfigure the sections, the waiters. You know, we had uh, all the sections were de dependent upon how big the room was and, and yeah. everything. So Get all the peanut shells out of the track on the floor. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I wish we would have had WD-40 back then because uh, sometimes those tracks were a bit sticky. Oh, you're really... Uh, after FAC. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and man, we had this we had this beat up little sound system. And I remember when we finally got the shore system, man, we thought we were big dogs. Remember that, yo? Yeah. Well let, let me ask you, uh, remember we used to play the, the the silent movies? We used to put on a tape of some sort that had a bunch of old songs on it um what did they cue that up from the band because i remember starting to project her up yeah. the, that was joanne castle the joanne castle tapes right yeah they had a bunch of old music on that we had a turntable to play records for the movies mm -hmm. yeah you used to get all those films from blackhawk films remember that yeah yeah roger remembers these blackhawk mm -hmm. the waiters would have to climb up in the middle of the crowd into the booth to change yeah. the film you know, but now that booth that was hanging from the ceiling was big enough to climb up in there. Yeah, and so, the year before I got there, somebody won the Keith Yorston Award by right. yeah. populating in the in the film booth. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 the films in New Orleans didn't have sound. 
<laughs> no, our films did not have sound. No, they, we put on some background music. Yeah. We had it in New York. Let's put it the way, if they had sound, there was no way to connect it from where our booth was uh, to the sound system. So we just played some some sound, you know. Well, while I was there, it was a cassette player right on a bandstand. We just hit the button. Put drop a cassette in? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I think so, I think Denver, the the silent movies had a soundtrack, musical soundtrack along with it, so it's just all in one. Now I only see Maynard and and um, Pete in this one. I don't know who these other guys are. Joel, oh, Joel, that's Joel and Farmer, Joel, isn't it? Joel yeah. and Dennis who's, Condry. Who's behind Joel? Dennis Condry. That's that, the same year. That's Marty Gras seventy three. What's his Jerry's last name? He's from Denver, right? Yes. Yeah, Dennis, yeah. Who's that? Condry. Dennis. Oh, Dennis Condry. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. That's the same year. That, Roger, that's 50 years ago today. How oh, are this week? My yeah. first time in New Orleans. Mardi Gras 73. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I have some pictures of Joel and I in Chicago. I was looking at him. We look so damn young, man. <laughs> yeah, I know you've seen this picture before, but um, let me get it up again. I uh, just putting it up again because uh, oh, yeah. like on the 25th, which is tomorrow, it'd be um, 19... uh, February 25th, 1972, this picture got taken. It was the day before I got married. And um, the reason I like it so much is we talk a lot about talk about it a lot, but just just the camaraderie. You know, when you were there at the mustache, it was not just so much like you were working. You were there with a lot of friends. A lot of friends. You know? you bet. It was just amazing being able to, you know, get sent off, <laughs> I guess, to my wedding. That's, a, that's uh, a very good picture of Charles Manson in the front. Yeah. <laughs> David, just Davy Krippner. David. David Krippner. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that, that is Irv Eisenplant Tuba. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's um Les John, Musket. Yeah, John Stacy on the washboard. He was a waiter that got kind of promoted to washboard player, I guess you can call it after Wilbur left. And then Stacy went on to the military. Freddie Lonzo, me, Mad Dog right behind me, and then Les Musket, Rex Carger. Oh yeah. Uh Irv Eisen, Al Siebel. Uh, all the way on the front, and uh, Kevin Monahan and David Krippner. Wow! Funny, I can remember all the names of those people. I can't tell you who uh, who I live next to right now. <laughs> that's right. Is it that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, you know, I, it just it just um, every time people talk about the camaraderie and and how you feel, this is it. You know, this is how uh, how we we worked and we and did played, work. You know? Well, and fifty years later, it's still there. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, mean, I haven't been to one of my high school reunions. <laughs> they're, they're I, go these, I go to these all the time. Yeah, I've been to a few high school reunions, but not not all of them. Yeah, I went to my 60th this last year up in Denver. Didn't recognize one person. No, you got really? to. Really? Also, you the they didn't recognize you either. What's that? They didn't recognize you either. So don't worry about. I hope not. I what hope year not. did you yeah, graduate? Well, when they go to the high school reunions, how many guys are not there? Yeah, for sure. There's yeah. What year did you graduate? What's that? What year did you graduate, Mike? 62, North High. North in Denver. Yeah, what year? 62. Oh, yeah, I was 61 at Aurora. Yeah. Fred and I graduated in 62 also. Mike, you went to school with Ron Fuller, right? Well, he was a year or two behind me, but we knew each other very well. And he's actually the guy that that uh, introduced me to your father's mustache in Larimer Square. And I was working as a loan officer in a bank, and he told me about mm -hmm. it. And I ended up going there. And one afternoon, Friday afternoon, I told the vice president, office manager, I said, geez, I'm sick, Bill. I, I got to go home. And he says, have a great, great time at your father's mustache and don't come back. <laughs> true story. Honest to God, true story. Yeah. This yeah, is a good you know picture. Mike, having a good time. Then. 
you know, even though we did like long sets and, and, and fairly strenuous sets, usually, uh, everybody's smiling. Everybody's having yeah. a good time. Yeah. You know, I, I had a great time playing there. Great oh, absolutely. Time. Absolutely. I never dreaded going to work. Well, yeah. as a waiter, a bartender, a doorman, a, you know, in the band when I could sit in or whatever, it was always a good time, man. The people were... Yeah. You weren't were going fantastic. to work. Were there it didn't great. seem like you were going to work. Going to have a party every night, it seemed like. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, see, what, what year was this? Oh, May uh, 73. 73. 73? Yeah. I know I was right behind Maynard. I'm not, the picture would have been better if you had the other banjo player in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a washboard. I'm right behind Maynard. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hmm. May of 73. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, my, I don't know. My, my we would have been playing a washboard then. No, we didn't have. I think. I think when Barry got there and did the side banjo, we didn't have a washboard for a while, huh? Yeah, I was playing before Mike got there, so that, that's me right behind Maynard. You don't see me. Mm -hmm. I'm in that picture. But I hear you. My Barry Maynard, yeah. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Mike, no. you got any pictures of Brussels Club? No, I really don't, Mike. I wish I did. And uh, no, there it is. Uh, this is uh, what Barry was talking about earlier. Uh, it, this was the mustache nose number six, the same one that I showed the cover of with uh, the. Yeah, that's uh, uh, Billy Higby in the front. Yeah, picture of suspenders or vests. Uh, yeah. I guess that we were debating about whether we should wear, you know, yeah, anybody who wants copies of this stuff, I, I, I made scans I could send you, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Make sure you send it all to Chris. Yeah, yeah. Because Chris has that site. He's got everything on it. Chris who? Benamore. Benamore? He's, a, he's uh, in Italy. You know, this isn't Brussels, but this is Blackpool. Right. And they, it looks like they managed to beat the hell out of those kegs. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, really? I don't think they, they sent us back to the brewery. That was an, inter <laughs> that was an interesting place. Where, where'd you get this photo? I thought they came from you, but I don't know where then. No, I didn't have that one. There's a couple of them. I'll show you the next one when I take this down. Because I was in Blackpool, I guess, for about... A month, couple months, maybe. I went over there to work. That was a crazy place. Well, everybody got the, everybody got a hat. Yeah, almost. Yeah. The, they had the mustache room in, in the lower level of it. The first walked in, they had a pub. Then upstairs, they had the Cherry Tree Hotel. That's where I stayed up there. And downstairs, and I came down to I went to cold beer in the afternoon. They said, we can't serve you. I said, why? I said, well, the bar's closed in the afternoon here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, make sure everybody like got back to, to work. 11 to, 11 to 2, Roger, and then from something like yeah. 6 to 10 at night, and then even on New Year's Eve, they had to close before midnight. It was, it was, did, Mike, didn't they do the same thing in Brussels? Like at 11 o'clock, they had to shut it down? You know, Mike, I don't for, remember. For, I was for, there for, about three days after it opened, and you asked if I had pictures of it, and the only pictures I have is the, the day after I got there, I took some pictures, and the front door didn't close. Uh, and there was a big, huge air compressor on wheels inside and a whole lot of concrete rubble. And the place was just a, a nightmare. Um, one electrical outlet on the right inside the front door with a cord running upstairs to a, a room that had a bed and a and cold running water in it, no toilets. It was an interesting place and a, one of the best experiences of my life. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> and Joel, thank you, guys. <laughs> Is this picture New York? No, this is Blackpool. Oh, that's it is Blackpool. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah look at those Blackpool. lights. Look at the that lights. Candy. That's Harry Black playing lead guitar, I believe. He went over to Brussels then, didn't he, Raj? I yeah, he was in Brussels before we got the club open, and uh, he and his wife and his kids came over several months before uh, the club got open, and he stayed. We had, a, we had a heck of a time trying to find a tuba player. We did find a trombone player, but 
we didn't end up with a tuba player for opening, but we had a, a guy named Marcel from France who was an accordion player. <laughs> so the opening band was was Harry Black and this guy Jean-Pierre, a French Belgian on trombone and Marcel on, <laughs> on accordion. It was an interesting combination. <laughs> Harry Black was a nice guy. Yeah. He was, he was a great guy. Great yep. guy. I like Harry. And a good player. Yes. He, he, used, he used to say when we were in a when we were in a class together trying to learn how to speak French, he'd say, "Hey, I'm a I'm a bloody banjo player. What the hell do I need to speak band, uh, speak French for?" You know, he <laughs> fought it for a while, but he he was pretty cool. I got I had a great time with you and uh, and Marie and Heidi and Peter. They they were really fun. Yeah, he's a very giving person. Yes. Now, was yeah, this the manager of Blackpool? Butch England. I don't know who is this. Wow! Well, look at all those beer taps. Yeah, it's a long time since I saw the. I, that well, those are like uh, England, uh, who was the manager at Blackpool when I was there in yeah. in nineteen seventy. Or liquor bottles on the wall. And you, yeah, but they, they have different kind of beer taps. Oh too, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You're right. right. Liquor bottle, and they pour the perfect shot. That's not Butch England, is it? I think so. I think it is, Mike. Did they turn up warm there? He, he went to he went to Brussels and he was the manager when I was there in Brussels. But uh, when Joel and I were over in in Blackpool, uh, it was Guy Fox weekend and and Butch uh, met us at the train and we stayed at his parents' house in Manchester and went and spent a two or three nights at the club in Blackpool. He's a really nice guy. Yeah, he was. He's still around. I don't know. He lives up in, he lives up in Toronto now, I think. In where? Toronto. Who's that? Butch England. Oh, Butch England, yes. But his he goes by his first uh, first name, which I can't remember what it is. It's not Butch, obviously. No. Yeah, he it's, was a he, he was a lot of fun. Yes, he was nice guy. Real nice guy. I was curious. Did they serve the beer at room temperature there? Cool. Um, it, yes, they do. I remember when some British would come into the club, they you know they were they were appalled that we served the beer cold. Yeah. <laughs> I was well, I was over there. That's so crazy. But the Guinness sure tasted good. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I the can drink the, Guinness the, the reason you serve the beer, the reason you serve the beer cold is it, it kills the taste buds. So the American beer doesn't yeah. taste like shit. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the picture. Then next to it is that is that a pint or something? Uh, next to the picture, it looks like another mug of some sort. Yeah, it kind of looks like a pint size. Yeah. So you can, I guess you look, look the, you look on the look on the bar to your left, Bill. You can see all the all the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the old fashioned pints, not yeah. the not the current ones that are just a tall, right? Tall glass jar that angles up. And I guess you only get like about two of those out of a picture, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man. Well, it depends. This, this was a typical Roger head. But that was <laughs> <laughs> no, I think our cooperage was figured that the head started at the handle and went to the top. Yeah, when Ro <laughs> Roger's behind the bar, it would be like about like this, and then you take it to the table, and the guy would say, "How come there's such a big head? You have to let the beer breathe." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't have a head; it was flat, right? Well, all the hops had to had to pop and open up. So you know, you had right. to... <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> of course, when Joe was behind the bar, we ran out of beer. I mean, he was pouring water and. Um, popping oh, the top on on the oh, cans and pouring it in. So that was that Saturday night, that right? Was it was Saturday and night, stir it up, man. Joel, yeah, yeah, he was pouring warm beer and water out of the tap and sending yep. it out. Well, no, we restrained it through ice first, I think. Or did we, start, we stirred it in a pitcher with ice and then we poured it to another pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> Put the chill on. Yeah, yeah. exactly what we did. We took swizzle sticks and stirred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We remember we used to sell those Schlitz Tall Boys out of the window, so yeah. that it was the sixteen ounce Schlitz. 
I think we dump a couple of those in a pitcher, put some water, ice, stir it up, and then pour it into another pitcher. Strained oh, ice. Yeah, it was still cheap here. It was, it was only what, 250? It was only 250 for a pitcher? No, 325. How much? Okay. Yeah. Oh. 250 now, for a mug. Since we're since we're broadcasting this on uh, on YouTube, uh, I guess we had to let everybody know that it was just that one night that we ran out of kegs. <laughs> <laughs> it was not an. This it was, was not every it, was, it was an emergency situation. All right. Yeah. Hey Roger. Yeah. Do you remember uh, a guy named Peter Huggett? Yeah, I remember the name. I can't. I can't picture. Well, he was. He was in. He was an English guy. He was in Belgium before I got there, and in, in the initial stages of setting up a club there, and then he had to go back to England for uh, hernia surgery. So I, I kind of took over from him, but he was an interesting guy. He had been uh, years, several years before that, he had been a bass player with Lonnie Donegan. Ah. Nice guy, interest, very interesting character. Hey guys, I got to run. Okay, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Nice seeing you, buddy. Take care, man. I'm Take running care. too. All right. See you next week. All right, see Barry. Barry. See you next week. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Bill. Sure. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bill. Bill. Have right, a great night. Right. You know. Have a good weekend, y'all. Everybody fast hard right. out there. You too, Mike. Okay. See ya. Bye-bye. Let the sun shine. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Give me a cold beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. All right. Now I got to find out how to turn it off. Oh, I can't get out. <laughs> I can't get out the front door. <laughs> all right. See you later, Roger. All right, take care. Nice, nice doing all this. No problem.